What's going on everyone, my name is Brobson, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get the Vitreous Stone Drake mount in World of Warcraft. The Vitreous Stone Drake is an epic quality flying mount that was added in the game in patch 4.0.3 at the release of the Cataclysm expansion. There are currently only 4 mounts in the entire game using the Stone Drake model, and I personally think that Stone Drakes have the coolest dragon type model for mounts in the entire game. Most players seem to think that the Twilight Drakes from the Burning Crusade or the Proto Drakes from Wrath of the Lich King are better, and while they are also great options, in my opinion the Stone Drakes are incredibly underrated, and I personally have spent many years of my life trying to complete the entire Stone Drake collection. Today's video will focus on the blue crystal variant, the Vitreous Stone Drake. As of the date of recording of this video, according to the World of Warcraft's website, approximately 17% of WoW accounts own the Vitreous Stone Drake mount. So while it's not extremely rare, it's still a great one to add to your collection, as more than 4 out of 5 players do not have this mount, and as you can see, it looks incredible. This mount is a very rare drop from the second boss of the Stone Core dungeon named Slabhide. Slabhide is a level 92 elite boss mob, and can easily be soloed and in most cases one-shot by max level players in current content. So you won't need to worry about mechanics or rotations of the fight, just walk up to the boss, auto-attack it, check the loot, and repeat. The Stone Core Dungeon is located in the Deepholm Zone, and there's a portal that you can take directly to Deepholm from the Eastern Earth Shrine in Stormwind or the Valley of Wisdom in Orgrimmar. The location of both of these portals is on screen now for reference. Once you take the portal, you simply want to get on your flying mount and fly out of the Temple of Earth, and then up the wall on the western side of the temple until you see a platform with the Dungeon Portal entrance. This is the entrance to the Stone Core Dungeon, and a place you'll become very familiar with while farming for this mount. The mount can drop on both normal and heroic difficulty, and it has the same drop chance on both difficulties. Since heroic dungeons can only be run once per day, you'll want to just continually run this dungeon on normal mode for multiple chances per day at the mount. To select dungeon difficulty, right click your character portrait, find the instance options section, and select normal difficulty under dungeon difficulty. Once this is done, you simply want to head inside the instance and start clearing. Here's a map of the dungeon, and as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward path to slab hide. Run down the main path to the first boss, Corborus, kill him, then head left through the cave until you find Slabhide. On your way to the first boss though, you'll need to continually kill the packs of mobs that Millhouse Mana Storm runs into. This will get him to continue running down the path ahead of you, and if you don't do this, he won't spawn the first boss and you won't be able to progress to Slabhide. So just make sure you AoE down all the packs of mobs that Millhouse runs into on your way to the first boss, Corborus. Once you take Corborus out, you can run straight through the cave to the west, and when you come out the other side, you'll see Slabhide flying off to the left of you. You don't fight him here, so simply ignore him and keep running towards his icon on the map. You'll see him follow you while flying, fly over your head, and land in front of you. This is where you fight him, and you should now be able to attack him. Again, he's level 92, so at level 120 you can just auto-attack him once, and he'll die. Loot him to see if you got the mount. If you did, congrats, but if not, you'll need to leave the dungeon, reset it, and repeat. Luckily for us, there's a portal right behind Slabhide's body that will activate after he's killed, and this portal takes you right back to the beginning of the instance. So instead of having to backtrack through the cave and run back to the beginning of the entrance, you can just click the portal to teleport straight back to the entrance, step outside the dungeon, reset, and repeat. To reset your dungeon, you simply need to right-click your character portrait, again go to the Instance Options section, and this time select Reset All Instances. This will reset the dungeon and allow you to run it again. With the convenience of the portal behind Slabhide that takes you back to the start of the dungeon, you can complete an entire run in roughly 2-3 to three minutes, which means you could get 20-30 to 30 dungeon runs done per hour. Unfortunately, World of Warcraft has an instance cap that prevents you from running more than 10 dungeons per hour per character. If you have multiple characters, you can simply run 10 on one character, then switch to another character and continue running. If you only have one character, that means you'll only be able to do 10 runs of stone core per hour, and then you'll have to wait until exactly one hour from the first time you reset your instances to be able to reset the 11th time and re-enter to do another 10 runs. The drop rate of this mount is listed at 0.68%, meaning that this mount will drop roughly once out of every 150 runs or so on average. Obviously, you could get incredibly lucky and get it on your very first run, or get incredibly unlucky and still not have it after 300 or more tries. It's all up to RNG, but on average you should prepare yourself to do about 200 or so runs of this dungeon to see the mount drop. There's really no trick to it, you just need to run the dungeon over, and over, and over, and over, and over, and over, and over again until you eventually get lucky and see the mount drop. 
The drop itself is called the Reigns of the Vitria Stone Drake, and when you loot the reins into your bags, you simply need to right click on it to learn the mount and add it to your collection. If you're anything like me, and you put your brain on autopilot while doing these runs over and over, you may sometimes actually forget to loot slab hide before taking the portal back to the start and resetting. If this happens, don't worry and don't panic thinking that the one time the mount dropped you forgot to loot it, because the game will actually send any loot that you missed to you in the mail, so just check your mailbox periodically for items sent from the postmaster to get any loot that you did not pick up off of bosses' bodies. And that's pretty much it for info on this mount. Head to stone core, run to slab hide, kill him, check your loot, and repeat. It is a fairly tedious process and a very low drop chance, so you're gonna have to do this over and over and over again, but since you can more or less non-stop farm it, it's not too difficult of a mount to obtain, and when you factor in how cool it looks, it's definitely worth the time spent, in my opinion. For the sake of trying to future-proof this video, it's worth mentioning that the upcoming expansion Shadowlands is coming with a level squish, so the max level for characters is being reduced from 120 to level 60, and all legacy content will be bracketed from levels 10 to 50. This means that Slabhide and all the bosses of the Stonecore dungeon will go from being level 92 to likely level 51 or 52. The mechanics and damage scaling shouldn't change, so it still should be an easy one-shot if you're at the max level of 60 in Shadowlands or even a higher level in later expansions, but I just wanted to give you a heads up in case you were confused about the levels. Thanks a lot for watching the video, everyone. Please remember to leave a like on the video if you found it informational, entertaining, or helpful in any way. Let me know in the comments what you thought, or if I forgot any information about this mount that you think people would benefit from, and I'll include it in a pinned comment giving you credit. Also, please feel free to suggest other mount guides that you'd like to see in the future. I plan to continue creating these, and I have a ton of ideas for future mount guides, but if there's anything in particular that you'd like a guide for, just let me know and I can move it up on my priority list. Eventually, we'll hopefully have a guide for every mount in the game. Thanks again for the feedback, please subscribe for future WoW guides and content as it'll be the primary focus of this channel headed into Shadowlands and hopefully beyond. Until next time, take care guys.